Today I'm going to be covering the fundamental operation of the plasma cutter. First thing that we need to know before we use the plasma cutter is that we need to know our geometry. So we need to have a DXF file created and written out on a USB flash drive. The second thing we need to know is our material, what type of material and the thickness of the material that we're going to be cutting. So what we're going to cover today is we're going to take our geometry, get it prepared to be cut right out our G code. We're going to turn on our equipment and then we're going to actually cut our part and then finally clean up and turn off uh, the equipment. First thing we need to do is turn on the computer. Come over, turn on our computer to boot up. This computer is a standalone computer. It is not connected to our network. So there is no login. It'll come right up to our welcome screen. First thing we're going to do is load our sheet cam program. So we'll find our sheet cam, TNG, double click on that, and it'll start our sheet cam program. Sheet cam is the program that will actually take our geometry and write the G code to control the plasma head. Once sheet cam is loaded, what we want to do is take our USB drive that has our geometry or our DXF file on it and put it into the computer. We're going to use the front USB ports. Start processing our geometry. The first thing we need to do is to load our DXF file into, our, into the sheet cam program. So to do that, we're going to go up to File, down to Import Drawing. Now we're going to navigate to our directory on our USB drive. And in this case, I have a video sample DXF file. I'll select it and then open it. It will come up with a box. Uh, we can pretty much take the defaults, but we have the scaling in an inch format. And the drawing position is in the lower left-hand corner. For the most part, we always want to use the lower left-hand corner for our origin. So we'll say OK. It will then load our drawing, and you can see your geometry should be visible on the screen. In this case, I have a square with a circle cut out in the middle of it. Now that I can see my geometry, now we need to start setting up what geometry we want to actually cut. And to do this, we are going to be doing a plasma cut. So we go up to the file menu and actually go to Operation. Go to Plasma Cut, and this will start a new Plasma Cut. And in this case, there's three tabs at the top of this, but we are only going to use the leftmost uh, tab. Uh, a lot of these settings are just going to be default, uh, but we do need to set a couple of them. First, Contour Method, no offset. That's by default. We'll accept that. The Layer says Layer 1. If there's no layer selected in here, we do need to select Layer 1. That's where our geometry is. Uh, tool is by default. Uh, we won't change that. The next item is feed rate. Now feed rate we need to look up from our data sheet. Now there is a sheet here that uh, is uh, included with the plasma cutter and we need to get the feed rate off of this chart. Now this chart, there's multiple charts in here but this is defined by the material. In this case this is a mild steel um, and that's what we're going to be cutting. It has a 40 amp tip that has an air shield on it. This is the default tip that we will be using. Uh, if the tip needs to be changed or if there's a different tip in there, please see the lab manager to make the modification and change the tip. We will not go through changing the tip in this video. But in this case, I have 20 gauge mild steel, so I'm on the right page. I go down to 20 gauge. I come all the way over to travel speed and it says 160 inches per minute. That's what I'm going to enter in on my setting here. So I'll change this from 165 to 160 on my feed rate. Uh, max chain length, zero, that is fine. Next is our lead in and lead out. We have arc checked by default. Typically, you will always be using a lead in and lead out. The plasma cutter, when it starts up, tends to have a lot of... Uh, energy and it can actually remove a lot more material and it can have undesirable results on your cut. So what we'll do is we'll use a lead in and lead out uh, in that to help prevent that. And we'll talk a little bit more about the lead in and lead out in just a moment. But by default we'll want to make sure we have that in there. We'll say OK. Now you can see on the screen it actually shows our paths. The purple paths are where the head is just moving. The green is actually the cut paths. And here you can see on these arcs right here, this is our lead in and lead out. 
and we also have a lead in and lead out up here. Now, sometimes we want to move where those lead in and lead outs go, and we can change that by up in the toolbar here. There is an, a, it kind of looks like a plus S, which is edit start positions or start points. We can click on that, and you can see we can actually move where we start our cuts. And if we want to move up here, we can change those around. Now, there's one thing that we need to, to do here is that this is actually cutting on the outside of this circle and on the inside of our box. Sometimes we want to reverse that position, meaning that we want this, in this case, we will actually make a good cut on our circle, but we'll have this lead in and lead out area in our box area. So this box area will have actually uh, some, some cuts that uh, will damage that part. And in this case, I may want my inside circle to be perfect. So this would be the right side. But if I wanted to keep this box part with the circle so that it, it is the right geometry, I want this lead in and lead out to be on the inside of that circle, not on the outside. And the way that we change that is that we make sure we have our edit start uh, points selected. We kind of hover over so that we have a white area or lead in and lead out selected. Right click and there is a selection that says reverse cut side and we can click on that and it will reverse it from one side to the other side of the line. Now we are going to be having the lead in and lead out in the circle portion. Our box will then remain uh, undamaged in that region. But up in our left hand corner or our right hand corner here, our lead in and lead out is on the inside. If I want to get that to the outside, I do the same thing. I come up here, highlight it in white, right click, reverse cut side, and now it puts it on the outside. Now our inside box area will be cut correctly. Here's an example of our lead in and lead out positions. This first one, we have the lead in and lead out on the outside of our circle cut. And you can see that there's uh, damage to the box portion in the, around the circle and in the upper right hand corner. We would want to do this though to have a good circle cut. And you can see that that circle comes out perfect. We have our damage on, the, on, our, part, on our box part. Now if we wanted to keep our box part nice, we will actually change that to the inside, the lead in and lead out. You can see that the circle now has the damage on it. And if we remove that, now we have our box with our circle cut in that looks like a finished part. So now, at this point, my geometry is all set up. I have all of the paths set. I have my lead in and lead out where I want it to be. Now we can actually go through and process to create our G code. To do that, we will then hit the P up in the upper left hand corner, which is run the post processor. So we can click on that. It will ask us where we want to save this file. By default, it will save it in the G code directory. And that's fine, we can save it there. If you'd like to save it to your, to your flash drive, that is fine, but this would be the preferred location to uh, save your file. So in this case, I will just click save. It will then say running post processor. It goes through processes our file and it'll say post processing complete. Now we can say okay. Now that we have our geometry all ready to go, we need to get the equipment turned on and ready. First thing we need to do is turn on our overhead blower. And we do that with our switch down at the end of the wall here. So to turn the bed blower on is we push the green button on the last band here. Let the bed turn on, the blower is now on. Next we want to turn on our main breaker. That will turn on the power to the system. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on our torch height control box and it is the, the on off switch is in the back right hand corner. So we're going to turn that on. We're not going to worry about the settings. We'll set that in just a moment. Next we need to turn on the plasma torch and we're going to turn the power on right here. And we'll notice that we have this setting to the 40 amp tip and you should have the uh, air pressure set to be between 70 and 75. And if we look down here, this is at 65, so we need to just adjust that. We pull the knob out, and then we just turn that until we get it to be between 70 and 75. 
and then we can push that back in to lock it into place. Next we need to reset the e-stop on the plasma table itself and that is on the far side over here. In this corner there is a red knob that we just need to pull out and now the table is ready to go. Now we're ready to start our controller program and that is Mach 3. So on the computer we can minimize our sheet cam and we have our Mach 3 icon. We'll double click on that. It will bring up our easy router program. We have our control screen here. First thing that we need to do is to click the reset button. It is flashing red and green down here. We need to click on that. Now that we've set the reset, it should turn green. What we need to do is reference all axes for the, con for the plasma cutter. So we're going to hit the ref all axis button. You'll hear the plasma cutter start to move. It is then going to find its home position on the table. Now that the head has stopped moving, we have zeroed the plasma cutter. Next we're going to load our material. Now we're going to load our material. We have our material rack. In this case I have my 20 gauge mild steel. It has some previous cuts on it, but I'm going to lay that down under the table. And the best thing is if we can get it close to our home position, that will minimize the amount of motion that we need to do with the, the head itself. Once we put the uh, material on the table, we can try to align the edges with the axes here just so that it's uh, nice and straight on there. Next we will want to hook up our grounding clamp. Uh, it is usually on the side of the table. Grab that and just attach that to your material. Make sure it has a good electrical connection. Now we're going to set the origin position for our geometry. When we set up our geometry, we use the lower left hand corner to control our zero zero position. We need to set that zero zero position to, so that we can cut in the correct spot on our, our sheet. So I'm going to use the keyboard, arrow keys, to actually move the head of the, the plasma cutter. Now the way I face the, the plasma cutter, this is to the right, that's my right arrow key. So I'm going to just move this, and I'm going to want to cut right in this region here. So I'm going to set the lower left hand corner. right there. So I've moved it over and uh, I can actually move the head up and down if I needed to get a little bit closer so I can see where I'm at. And yes, that's where I want to be. Now that we have our torch head location set, we need to zero it out on the computer. So we're going to zero torch head or click the zero torch head button. We're going to click on that. You'll hear the head move a little bit. Now it's zeroed out. It's, it's in its correct location to cut. Now we're going to load our geometry. So in this case, we're going to load G code. Click on our load G code. It will come up to our G code directory. And in this case, I'm going to load my video sample G code that I had written out with uh, sheet cam earlier. Open that up. It will load it. it will, you'll see it up in the left hand corner. On the right hand side you'll see all of your geometry with all the cut positions. So you can see the lead in, lead out locations. Everything should look good. As long as everything looks good, we are then ready to set our torch head controller. Now we need to turn it on and we're going to click on our torch head controller button. Once you click on it, it will start flashing. We're then going to dial in our value. Now this value comes from our data sheet again. We're using our mild steel, 40 amp tip. We've got our 20 gauge. We come over, our arc voltage says 101 for our volts. So we're going to then use the dial, dial this back to 101. And now we have our torch head controller set. The torch head controller does require that the 
uh, surface of the material be clean. So what we want to do is make sure that we've got a clean surface. We're just going to grab a rag, just wipe off where we're going to cut, make sure there's no water, make sure there's no debris on the surface. The other thing that we need before the, we can cut is the, the plasma table does have water in it to prevent uh, uh, any sort of sparks or to actually collect the slag that comes off of the part. So we need to make sure there's water in the table. There is. If there isn't, we do have a bucket with a, a sink over there that you can just fill that up. But it should be full when you're ready to use it. At this point, we're ready to cut. So we're going to put our pr protective panels in place, and then we'll start cutting. So we're going to slide over our panels. Now we're ready to start cutting. To start cutting, we need to press the screen cycle start button. Here, we'll just come over, click cycle start. It'll turn green. The head will start moving. When the head returns to the origin position, it is done. You will hear the air still continue to flow. So even though the air is flowing, it is done cutting. Now that it's done cutting, we can remove our panels and retrieve our finished part. After the part is cut, it can be warm, so we can use a glove to help us retrieve our part. Sometimes the part will actually fall down into the water, and we have to retrieve it out of there. Now we're going to just move the material out of the way. I can see the part is down in the water. I can retrieve it. It will be wet. We can take a rag, dry it off. Now you have your finished part. Now that we're done, we're going to shut everything down and put our material away. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll turn off the torch head controller. We can turn off the plasma torch and we can reset our e-stop on our plasma table. Next we can turn our breaker off and now we can put our material away. Unhook our grounding strap Put our material back on the rack. We can then shut down our programs. And shut down our computer. And finally, we will want to turn off the overhead blower. Thank you very much.